Okay. My name is Noel Beckman, and I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow at the Mathematical Biosciences Institute at The Ohio State University. My research addresses how there can be so many tree species that can coexist in an area. To do this, I integrate both empirical and theoretical approaches. Some of my field work is based in tropical forests, such as this one in Panama, Barro, Colorado Island, a well-renowned field station for tropical ecology. Tropical forests cover approximately 10% of the Earth's surface, but harbor over half of the world's biodiversity. For example, here in Panama, there are approximately 90 tree species per hectare, which is about two and a half acres, compared to a diverse forest in Southeast North America, which only has 40 tree species per hectare. This high biodiversity provides novel medicinal compounds, while the high productivity of tropical forests make them important for carbon storage. There are many threats to tropical forests, including rapid deforestation and local extinction of many mammals, which can have unknown consequences for, for these ecosystems. In my research, I'm interested in the mechanisms that underlie patterns of plant diversity and how environmental change will affect this diversity. Plants are sessile organisms and respond strongly to their local environment. This includes abiotic factors such as light, water, and nutrients, as well as biotic factors such as the neighbors that surround plants, animals, and microorganisms. These can be both beneficial for the plant or they could be fatal. In the tropics, over 80% of tree species are dispersed by vertebrates, and this sets that initial spatial distribution for plants. Seed dispersal allows plants to escape high mortality under the parent tree and to colonize new habitats. But plants can also experience high mortality at the seed and seedling stages. There are many predators such as brood beetles that eat seeds from the inside out. The adult beetles will lay their eggs on the outside of the seed, then the larva will hatch and drill into the seed, and the larva will then eat its way out of the seed and emerge as, as an adult. Plants also have many plant diseases, such as fungus and bacteria that kill seedlings. Seed dispersers, which are beneficial for plants, seed predators and pathogens, which can kill plants, all have been proposed to help maintain plant diversity. In addition, people are altering a lot of these interactions, either indirectly or directly. For example, many of the mammals that disperse seeds in tropical forests are being extirpated. Through hunting or deforestation, the mammal abundances have decreased. This local extinction of mammals will affect seed dispersal and the resulting spatial patterns of plants. This will then affect where a seed lands and therefore affect the interactions it has with seed predators and its neighbors and plant diseases and can potentially affect future population sizes of the plants. Hence, decreasing abundances of mammals will have indirect and unknown consequences for plant diversity. I am interested in how these very local interactions affect patterns of plant distributions and diversity that we observe at much larger spatial scales and temporal scales, and how a disruption of these interactions affect plant communities and ecosystem function. I use field and laboratory experiments coupled with statistical models to examine how these plant animal and plant microbial interactions are mediated by plant traits such as morphology or chemistry. For example, a plant with small seeds might be more susceptible to pathogens and insect seed predators because it might have a thinner seed coat. Or plants that have fewer chemical defenses might be more vulnerable to attack by, by herbivores and, and pathogens or plant diseases. I'm also interested in how evolutionary history among plants might mediate interactions with, with seed predators and pathogens. So a plant that is surrounded by neighbors that are more related to each other might be more susceptible to a pathogen or herbivore that is attacking its neighbor because of their shared evolutionary history. Whereas a plant that's surrounded by plants that are more distantly related might be able to escape that pathogen or seed predator. So we can use these relationships to predict outcomes for unstudied species. And this is particularly important in hyper-diverse forests such as this one, where it is logistically infeasible to perform experiments on every single plant species. However, experiments tend to be over short time periods and small spatial scales, but they can inform the development of mathematical models. And I use these mathematical models to explore the patterns that emerge at much larger time and spatial scales, which are difficult to study in the field.